So how do you replace a foundation under an existing house? That was one of the first challenges that we ran into with our old house. And it's actually not that difficult. Originally, we had contracted to have the piers underneath the house rebuilt. This house had a what they call a pier foundation um, or a pier and curtain foundation. What we had was a pier and curtain foundation. A pier and curtain is where because the house was built on old brick piers and nowadays you have to have it closed in underneath the house. It's good for uh, moisture, it's better for uh, keeping animals out. So what they would do is they'd basically put a curtain or uh, our house had a wood kind of curtain in between those piers to keep things from going underneath the house. So we had originally contracted to have those piers rebuilt. Our piers were built out of brick and the, the mortar that they used for the brick back then is very much like the chimneys, well it was the same as the chimneys, which is just, um, it's mortar that is made on site from old clay in the soil. Our old foundation was very brittle to say the least. It's amazing that the house stood here for as long as it did, but that's the thing is it sat here for a hundred years, so the pier foundation really worked. Long story short, um, even though we could have built a rebuilt the pier and curtain foundation and saved a little bit of money, our contractor decided to just go ahead and build a solid uh, cinder block foundation. And we built this cinder block foundation underneath the existing structure. We didn't have a house mover come in and lift the house. There's nothing like that. This foundation was hand built below the existing house. So how did we do that? What goes into building or rebuilding a foundation under an existing house? For one, we had those piers and the curtains. So once we were to remove the curtain, it was fairly easy to go in and dig out for the footings where the curtain had previously been. We actually did the whole house by uh, digging out the footing underneath the existing house. The way it worked is we started up at the very corner of the house and began digging the footing for the foundation and we'd make our way down a side of the house. We would jack the house up. The jacks that we were using were just your typical uh, car jacks. They're, they were a little hefty on that side. I mean, they're, they're like truck jacks. They build two tons, four tons, whatever it is. Sometimes we'd use boards to brace as the jacks would push up. All of this is just kind of mechanically uh, moving around your jacks to be able to lift the house. You only have to get the house a few inches above uh, the foundation to really do this. So uh, here's our, uh, you can see where the foundation meets the house here. We basically were jacking the house up from the inside so that it was just a little bit above the foundation that the weight was off of our piers and then we would tumble down the piers in that section and start building our foundation wall. We did this in sections working from the front corner of the house and then making our way back. To make sure that this is level, we actually made sure that the foundation wall itself was what was level. So as we were jacking up the house, and you can imagine the house is kind of all over the place as you do this, um, and you're only getting it just about an inch above where it needs to be. What we made sure was level was the top of this foundation wall. We basically just worked our way around the house, rebuilt the foundation. We did a section at a time, so you'll see in some of our photos that there's a section of foundation built, and then we kind of moved the jacks on down, built up the next section. It was definitely a lengthy, tricky process. Now, the foundation that's actually directly behind me is one we built for an addition. So this foundation was added later. It was added the same way we dug the foundation footings. We didn't have a house above it to jack up, so that made it a little easier. And then uh, we connected it back with the existing foundation. So this particular wall was actually built without anything above it but the concept of actually building the foundation, digging your footings, and um, placing the center blocks was the same. The footings, depending on your local code, but you have to dig deep enough that you are below the frost line. So 
In our area, it's 18 inches. I believe our footing actually goes down a bit below the 18 inches because we wanted to make sure it was a solid structure. The footings are dug down, let's say 20 inches, 24 inches. And then you're, you fill those with concrete. And areas that are dropping, um, we'll actually install, we'll, we'll kind of dig a, a kind of like a step in the foundation so that we can make sure that we're keeping that foundation uh, footer as flat as possible. You can use self-leveling concrete. I'm not sure how well that stuff really works. I've seen people use it. Uh, the self-leveling concrete, as you dig out a section, you pour it in and it'll level itself out. Our contractors, at least the ones who added the additional foundation, would use levels so as they went in and they spread the concrete into those sections they would level it out the leveler. There's probably a lot of information out there on building footings. It's not that difficult um, and as long as your footings are measured out, they're flat, they're level, and the, the steps are the, the exact width for your cinder blocks you should be able to build a perfectly straight, flat cinder block wall on top of that. Of course, this entire process constantly requires re-leveling and making sure that the wall that you're building is completely level. Now, while the original contractor was somewhat genius by being able to rebuild the foundation under the existing house, he did forget one important factor when it comes to building foundations, and that is that this top block of the foundation needs to be solid. And the reason being is the house needs to be able to anchor to the foundation wall. It can't just be a freestanding structure sitting on top of the foundation. A major storm could cause the house to shift and fall off. The settling of the foundation could cause the house to shift and fall off. You have to have a way to anchor this house to the foundation. And the way they do that is the, um, the band around the house, the main beam, they'll actually drill a bolt down through the band and into the concrete block. Now, if you're building a foundation without a structure on top, the way that you would do this is you would put your bolts into the concrete and so they would be set in the concrete and then you drill the holes on your uh, top plate as you brought it down. With an existing home where you've got it jacked up, as long as these top uh, center blocks are filled with concrete you should be able to drill from the top through the band through the top plate and and bottom plate and then down into the the actual cinder block foundation and install your your lag bolts because he did not fill those with concrete we had a major issue there the other concern is that uh, water and other things can get down inside the foundation wall if those aren't filled it just, if you're building this, you've got to remember to fill those top cinder blocks with concrete when you're setting them in. And the, the way that you do that is you'll actually have, uh, as you're laying these bricks, you'll actually have wires that go in there that you're applying the mortar to to help hold this whole thing together. On this top layer, you'll put in more of a netted wire that will help hold the concrete in as you fill those top blocks and put them in place. Without having those top center blocks filled, we had to come up with another solution to make the inspector happy and to make our engineer happy because of course you can't have a house that's not secured to the foundation. So what we actually ended up doing was using metal straps on the inside of the house that are bolted to the band of the house and then they go down and bolt all the way down the foundation wall. Um, those straps are designed to hold, um, well they use them in a number of different scenarios, but it's very similar to how you know you may attach a manufactured home or something to a foundation. They're not as ideal as just having a, a bolt coming up through the foundation, but we've installed so many on here it's just as strong if not stronger. And so those metal straps come down along the inside of the wall and then they actually bolt down into the footing of the foundation. They don't just come down and bolt into the side of this. They have to go down into the footing of the foundation because we had to have 
a long, deep area where we could really anchor the house down. So that's how we built the foundation under this old house. I hope this video is somewhat useful to you, especially if you're out wondering how you rebuild a foundation underneath an existing home. It doesn't require giant machines to lift it up. This one was rebuilt by hand and uh, it, it's an excellent foundation um, after we've had to make a few modifications to it, but it is a great foundation. The other thing you need to remember with your foundations is to install, leave a spot for your vents. We'll get into waterproofing a foundation in a separate video, but these vents are part of the overall atmospheric control of what's going on in your crawl space. These vents are automatic vents, which means they open and close depending on the humidity underneath the house. It's important to have vents that open and close. You know, otherwise, during different seasons of the year, you're going to have to manually open and close those vents. These vents really aren't that much more expensive than your standard vent, and you're going to have to have vents throughout your foundation wall. And so that's the only other thing when you're building the foundation to make sure that you're leaving out a cinder block. See, I think we have them probably about every 10 feet, eight to 10 feet, we have a vent. So um, yeah, have fun building. <laughs>